<laughs> Hello. Oh, music. Yeah. Uh, this is why I'm doing that because I was like, oh, I can't just keep getting louder and louder. That's no fun. <laughs> there are limits to your powers. Yeah. Well, and also eventually you're going to go like, well, this was fun, but now I'm getting yelled at. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe a new hobby. Episode 26 of That's Alex true. and Jim. Analyze. Billy Joel. Billy Joel lyrics. Billy Joel lyrics. And uh, we took last week off. If you missed the episode, if you missed us uploading another episode, we took last week off because uh, it was my anniversary. And both my wife and I realized it at the last second. <laughs> Great. I actually, I'm like, if one of you forgets an anniversary, that could be a problem in a relationship. Could be. If both of you forget it, I think it's a good thing. I think that's a good relationship. Yeah, because both of you either, you know, you've just settled into I like you well enough, Rumi. And <laughs> that's, great. that's great. Or I think it's more like with us, we're just, that's not our focus as those kind of um, things. So right. we took the dogs out. It ended up, it's so funny. She made a very romantic suggestion of one thing we could have done. And then I said, I said, or I said, I'm happy to do that thing that you just said. And then I said, or we put the dogs in the car, we drive to the beach, walk on the grass with the dogs, lay there for a while, go get donuts, come home. And she was like, oh, that's such a better idea. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she was actually really happy that I made the other suggestion. And then I went back and I said, we can do the thing you want to do. And she goes, oh, no, I, I was just saying that for you. I don't want to do that. It's like, oh, good. OK, great. I mean, you landed it. Yeah. I didn't, it. didn't have to spend it money. The, that's the, the best case scenario, like you said, is everybody forgets. Yeah. <laughs> One person forgets is bad, but I think it might be even worse if both people remember real early and then you have to figure out whose thing you're going to do. Mm -hmm. and then you always decide, oh, well, we'll do both things. We'll do your thing where we go to a romantic dinner and go out on the town and then we'll do my thing where we have dirty sex. <laughs> and then you don't get to do your thing because you're tired from dinner. <laughs> So I think you nailed it. <laughs> oh, Lord. You definitely, the, the second idea is always somebody's idea. I'm here of the dirty sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. But first, we'll eat a lot. Of, we'll have two baskets of bread, <laughs> a bottle of wine, and then some weird chicken thing. <laughs> then I'll yell at you while you drive home. If you're gonna have the dirty sex, you have to do it at like 4 p.m. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get the uh, <laughs> early bird special on the dirty sex. <laughs> That's right. The furs cafeteria. <laughs> it on. Oh <laughs> God, that's fantastic. Uh, I thought of a bit this week. I'm gonna share it with you, and then we'll get right into Billy Joel. But it's a bit I will never do in stand-up because I don't do this kind of stand-up anymore. But it's the kind of bit I think you would enjoy. It's the kind of stand-up I would have done it like to kill a mockingbird just to kill a night. Or it's a thing I might do if it was like a night of a bunch of weird comics and I was like, well, let's just screw around. And it's a it's a the premise is sounds like jokes, but aren't jokes. That's right. the premise. Uh, hey Alex, did I tell you the one about the blind eye doctor? No, no, please. Yeah, it's a progressive condition. He had to retire early. He's very sad about it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear the one about the rabbi and the imam and the uh, Catholic bishop that went into a bar? No, what happened? Well, they had a few drinks. They're very sad about this Palestinian situation. It turns out Palestinians are people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Nobody. Oh. <laughs> wait a minute. Then who knocked? Oh, uh, wait. yeah. It all breaks down. It all breaks down. See, that's why jokes are better than uh, whatever those are. Right? Exactly. 
uh, I did another bit years ago where I would I would say it was jokes the continuation. So like you do the interrupting cow, and yeah. you, go, you know knock knock who's there move move who Inter uh, move interrupting cow, and then you go hey interrupting cow. I've been meaning to talk to you. It's hard to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> and then just have this conversation because listen, yeah. what you've been doing is it's rude. Is the yeah. thing. I know it's your name, but you could change that. Yeah. And you care about my feelings, right? <laughs> Interrupting Cal, we've been buddies for a long time. <laughs> so, uh, least, yeah, at least you're not barging in, Cal. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's that. true. Thanks for knocking. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cal who uh, cheated on me with my wife. Oh, come on. Yeah, I don't, not friends with that Cal anymore at all. <laughs> uh, shouldn't have done that. He was he was my best man. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe this is a joke book. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, or uh, a lead into our next album with songs we rate we wrote based on that because we're making a band too. Right, right. We have a, so much to do. So many. Uh, right. It occurs to me that twenty six. Uh, episodes means uh, we're doing it for half a year. Oh yeah, yeah. And we like, we only skipped last week, I think. Did we skip another week somewhere, and we might have skipped another week somewhere in there. Christmas, I think we skipped. That's reasonable of us. Yeah, I, that was reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah, I think we did. We skipped like one or two weeks, but that's it. So really, more than half a year we've been doing this. Yep. Absolutely. Well, I am enjoying every episode. I really am. I love your company and I love the subject. So, yay. Now, speaking of which, let me bring up the song that you picked. And you did something, you wanted to do something different. So, you said, How about we analyze a Beatles song this week? That's <laughs> it's really, really a spot on Beatles. Yes. And it's but, not yeah. just a Beatles song to me, it's, uh, Later half Beatles and John wrote it for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say you're the Beatles expert, so you would know like what album this would end up on. Yeah, this would be to me. This is would be a great song on the White Album, uh, okay? Because it's it's you know there's a lot of disparate um, influences on that particular album. You know, sure. it's not entirely a wholly focused album, but it's one of the things that makes that album fun for people. It's a double album. But this definitely, the, the song is Surprises. It's off of the Nylon Curtain. And it so much is a John Lennon song. <laughs> yeah. But I, it feels more like a John Lennon Beatles song in that, and that makes sense if you're like, if you're Billy Joel and you love John Lennon and the Beatles, you're not gonna do your double fantasy tribute. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're gonna uh, get the whole package. You're gonna get like the, the Paul McCartney influence that, you know, shaved some of, some, of, some of John's rougher edges down, you know, which is right. why they were a great writing team. Yeah, a little more melody than John would have. Yeah. yeah. A little more craziness than Paul would ever have. It even has the, I don't think it's echo exactly, but it even has some of the, the vocal recording style that John seemed to prefer. Yeah. Particularly well, later in his career. Yeah, singing up from out of a well or something. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah. That, or through like, a tin can. And that was pretty much like, if you listen to John Lennon stuff, there's one or two things that more or less happen is he either does something brutally stripped down where there's almost no effort made into production and that's what makes it magic. Right. Or, it's produced the hell out of it. Like the cla the classic that people love and people made fun of Gail Get Out for, I uh, imagine. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a beautiful song that I think could have been done more simply. And yet he preferred the recording of his voice to be that way. Huh. For whatever reason, if you listen to it, you can just kind of tell there was a lot of production that went in there. And I don't know yeah. if that was insecurity at the time, but it's still a lovely song. But that's a different podcast. <laughs> um, well where is it yeah <laughs> but you definitely uh 
you definitely hear a lot of Beatles influence in this song and not in a bad way. I think it's a really nice song. It's really, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice song. It's a really nice, uh, I mean, there are a lot of Billy Joel songs that I think are like skirting around the Beatles yeah. sound. He, you know, he is a very outspoken giant Beatles fan. Um, and, but usually when like a band is like, we're going to try to sound like the Beatles, it's like one version of the Beatles that they go for. Yeah. And it's usually the first half, <laughs> you know, it's uh, like a twist and shout kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and they're like, yeah, we sound like the Beatles. <laughs> um, and this was like, he like set out to write a Beatles B-side is what it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. He knew that, I don't know, he had to know this wasn't going to be a hit. Yeah, what a nice place to be in, too, as a performer where you're like, it kind of doesn't matter because okay. I'm going to be making, and because at that point, he's right in the middle of height of his Billy Joel powers as far as being a success. Yeah. So I'm sure he felt some pressure, but for the most part. Well, not pressure. Ah, there we go. Oh, we should talk about that. Uh, <laughs> for the most part, I just think he, again, he follows his muse. He does what he wants to do when he wanted to do a Beatles song. You know what this would fit really well, too, would be on that album they tried to make with John Lennon Leftovers that had made. Remember that album? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Like, remember the song Real oh. Love? Okay. And and uh free free as a bird i think it was called okay. um, both, the, both those songs were when they did they did this big re-release because they i for reals because they needed money I'm but sure. particularly george because uh paul's fine you know he's always manages money pretty well but george is pretty broke uh because <laughs> he's giving it to monty python to make movies <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, worst idea yeah, no, not bad at all. So they did this sort of album that was mostly like re-releases, remasters, and rarities. And they okay. had two new Beatles songs. And by then, of course, John Lennon had been long since passed away. Hmm. But there were these two unfinished Lennon works that had been in Yoko's possession. And they finally made peace with Yoko. And they made these songs, um, Real Love and Free as a Bird. And they're fine. And the way that Paul McCartney described it is he said, what we had to do was imagine that John had gone to lunch and said, well, you guys keep working. I need to go get something to eat because otherwise it was too sad. Yeah, yeah. well, that makes sense. I would love to think that they also worked that way sometimes. <laughs> I bet they did. I'm going to lunch. You guys work on the song a little bit. Yep. <laughs> when I get back, I'll change it all back. Yeah. Well, there are so many Lennon McCartney songs that are like, what did John Lennon do on this? He he thought of this line and the rest is Paul. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. one line you're like, oh, but I really like that line. That line's real like, crazy. It's Doesn't getting better all the time. It's getting better all the time. John Lennon's contribution was, can't get much worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that summarizes the relationship pretty well. Yeah, it absolutely does. <laughs> and then, um, so here we got got our uh, our Billy Joel sort of very John Lennon Beatles song. I'll start it out. All right. Uh, <laughs> that was a little, little liver puddly of you. That was nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Don't get excited. Don't say a word. Nobody noticed nothing was heard uh very simple concise but i like that lyric a lot yeah very nicely done um i like the all the ends nobody noticed nothing was heard uh the alliteration yeah. uh, i also like this is very unlike billy joel in that i have no idea who he's talking to what the point of view is what he's talking about yeah very it's like poetry where you're like well i maybe i'll find out by the end of this but maybe not yeah and it's a, a little sinister yeah yeah the music is sinister for sure 
and I feel just right off the bat, I like the nobody noticed, nothing was heard. There's two kinds of ways you can look at that. And I think they, and you could do it both at the same time, which is I'm glad nobody noticed and nothing was heard, but also nobody's looking and nobody's listening. <laughs> bummer. Oh, yeah. I can hear that both ways. And I can hear it like if I imagine the scenario, the scenario of, of like, let's say, and this is before getting in the rest of the lyrics, but if, you know, like I had an outburst about something I was upset about and I'm a little embarrassed. Oh, don't worry, nobody noticed. And then you're like, yeah, but I was really upset and nobody noticed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess I'm glad nobody noticed, but huh. Also, do, do they ever? Yeah. Uh, so why don't you pop on to the next lyric? Popping. <laughs> <laughs> it was committed discreetly. It was handled so neatly, and it shouldn't surprise you at all. You know. Huh. I like it. I like it. I do. Uh, I feel like discreetly is a clue yeah. because the only things you do discreetly are things you're not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So something, they are in cahoots. <laughs> yeah. The singer yeah. and the sing E. Yeah, it possibly undoes my initial interpretation of the first lyric, but that's fine. I still hear it in there, which is why I like that kind of lyric at the beginning of a song. Yeah, so it could be going on. I like too. I always like it when there you think you're going one way, and it's like you get tugged in a different direction. You're like, well, the first thing still made sense, but okay, we'll go over here. Yeah, see what this is. Like, um, yeah, it was committed, and it was handled. Yeah, and uh, and uh, we got away with it, probably. We got away with it. Yeah. I'm going to say uh, this is like a, an affair or a one night stand or something. Yeah, that would track pretty, pretty good. Um, break all the records, burn the cassettes. Oh. I'm lying if I told you that I had no regrets. Flawless piece of just flawless. It's simple. <laughs> Man, this is simple yeah. in the best yeah. way. It is, yeah, it's, it's uh, so much closer to uh, Beatles style writing. I mean, I, you know, I'm not a Beatles fan in the same way you are, but I have listened to a lot of Beatles and there's a very high percentage of songs where I don't know what's going on. Yeah. But it sounds great and it's lyrically interesting. And at the end of the song, I'm like, well, I don't know what that was about, but I liked it. Yeah. Um, and he, and that is not territory that Billy Joel goes into very often. Usually it's very, you know, very often it's like, well, there was a guy and his name was this and he liked this girl and this is her name and they lived in this place. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and Eddie were the popular steadies. I'm like, okay. Oh. It's, it just, you know, it's this is very poetic. He's usually more prose. Yeah. But um, again, you know, we were thinking affair and now it's break all the records and burn the cassettes. So now I don't know if now is this, did he make a bad album and nobody heard it? <laughs> you, yeah. know what I mean? you know, uh, it, um, you know, the song fire and rain, um, yes. the song fire and rain. If you hear him talk about it, who did that? That was, uh, James Taylor. James Taylor. You hear him talk about it because it's all the all the lyrics are pretty oblique, right? I think. Um, yeah. But when he tells it, he's like, "Well, what it is is it's more like it's like four or five stories, because it's all stuff he went through." Right. Um, I wonder if this is a little bit about that, because how close would this have been to? 1982. I mean, it's hard to know for sure, but it's got to it's got to be near a divorce. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> yeah, good chance. Yeah, which yeah. is which I I get by the way. I'm saying absolutely nothing when I'm like, was this near his a divorce? I'm like, well, yes. Was it a year? Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, decent chance. But it could be that. But also, I think you're right. It does feel like. 
it was committed discreetly and was handled so neatly. Break all the records, burn the cassettes. That uh, could very easily be a story about an album that was like poorly received or not even released. Yeah, decent chance. It could also be, it occurs to me, uh, metaphorical records and cassettes. True, absolutely. And just saying like, just forget everything <laughs> we did um, yeah. during our late afternoon dirty sex. Yeah. Uh, I'd be lying if I told you that I had no regrets. I like the, the not quite rhyming of cassettes and regrets. I do too. I do too. Um, and just, I like, yeah. if it's nice about- Nice little uh, haikus. Yeah, and if it's about sex, the dirty sex that happens at four o'clock, <laughs> um, I like, <laughs> I don't know, I like an acknowledgement every now and then from a fella that there's parts of it that are regretful rather than always having to be the tough guy who's like, oh, you know what, we got down and it was always worth it. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I like a acknowledgement that it ain't always worth it. Yeah. Uh, that even if it was amazing at the time, yeah, the maybe not a great idea. Yeah, the subsequent fallout, the personal feelings, the like, I don't know, the, the perennial need for a shower. <laughs> That you, know, that you know won't wash away what's bothering you. Oh boy, oh boy. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, in, re in real life too, I'm happy, you know, and then at the end of the day, you're like, I'm glad I got to make those mistakes. Um, <laughs> there were so many mistakes and what a difference it makes, but it shouldn't surprise you at all. You know. You know. Yeah, you know, listening to the song, um, every time he goes, you know, it just sounds like rock and roll filler. Mm -hmm. In the same way dudes will say like, well, <laughs> or, uh, yeah. you know, right on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and like reading it, I'm like, it, oh no, it's part of the sentence. And still, it shouldn't surprise you at all. You know. Yeah. You know who I am and what I'm capable of. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or whatever, whatever he's going for that is a great read by the way nice job i like yeah you know who i am yeah uh there were so many mistakes and what a difference it makes um yeah. i like that too because a lot of, you know the mistakes mattered i like that it's i like the you know because we've often heard well we did this and that and amount amounted to nothing but like no you yeah, know this some of these mistakes sting and some of them stick i like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i like uh, also the no the sparsity of uh, details like it doesn't matter exactly this song is about that the feeling i think that you get huh absolutely when, uh, you and someone else have made a mistake together and like nobody noticed, but we both know about it. And now we're always going to have this thing. When I see you at parties, we'll be like, eh, we made the mistake, remember? Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that, just like hashing out that feeling more than the specifics. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny when you think about it. Um, first of all, you're right. There are so many times when you hear a song, even by our, our friend Billy Joel, where you're like, and you're telling me a lot of stuff and now it seems ridiculous and made up and then yeah. where is this sparsity but also the sparsity fits for what we're talking about because i'm not necessarily going to fill in the date details because i'm ashamed i'm acknowledging right. it yes yeah uh, the kind of the way mafia guys talk about crimes yeah remember we did the thing over by the place you got that sandwich and you're like, I oh, yeah, the sandwich is where we buried him or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was near that sandwich place. That's right. <laughs> that's where the thing happened. I'll tell you that because that's what I know about mafia guys. They love sandwiches. They love sandwiches. <laughs> They're not alone. No. Mafia guys. They're just like us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, here it does it uh your favorite thing a weird little bridge but it works 
Mm -hmm. I said, it shouldn't surprise you at all. You know, don't look now, but you have changed. Your best friends wouldn't tell you. That's neat. That's neat. And it also is uh, really beetly. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. It's very like British phrasing to say, don't look now, but you've changed. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. It's very funny to me that uh, just the picturing him like, he probably was like doing it with a little accent when he's fucking around making this song. This is like really pretending to be in the Beatles. <laughs> you have to, to do this correctly, you know? Yeah. I certainly, you know, when I, I used to write jokes for Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Uh, <laughs> Name drop. Uh, yeah. You have to like try to think in their voice yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's you, the job. like reading it out loud to yourself, kind of like they would. And like well, Tina would do this, and then she you know, <laughs> feel like an idiot. But whatever gets you there. Yeah, but it's it's the right right way to do it. Yeah, it's the right way to yeah. get to, to get you to the end. get in their voice. Yeah, I mean, the only problem is he didn't then write the song and hand it to the Beatles. He just did it himself. Yeah, and he kept the parts. Don't look now, but you have changed. Um, your best friends wouldn't tell you. That's great. That is, that great. is great. There's a couple things going on there too. Is there's there's first of all, heads up, you think you're who you were, you're not. You prob probably become more uptight or whatever the re up thing. Sure. Paranoid. What, what, you know, if he's talking about some bird, I'm trying to think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but your best friends wouldn't tell you. There's a couple things in that, which is your best friends aren't great friends is also just kind yes. of sort of sad implication of that line, which is yeah. nice. It's also an inversion of what you would normally think, which normally the cliche is that your best friends will tell you things. Yeah. So it's a nice uh, flip on that. It's like, no, your best friends <laughs> will not tell you. Sometimes. Maybe because the thing is so heinous. Oh, yeah. Um, and you have changed in such a creepy way. Yeah, you know, in, in uh, as a performer, um, I love it when my friends come and see a show, right? I like it when they come see a show. Sure. But I like it better when strangers come see a show. It means more to me when strangers do. Yeah, yeah because they, they're not obligated. And they'll tell you the truth. Yes. About your dumb joke. Yes, absolutely. I want to apologize because I keep shifting around and moving the computer because I destroyed my lower back somehow. Oh, sorry. That sucks. I keep changing positions. Well, keep doing that. I am of a similar age and I get it. So you get it. Yeah, that's uh, my, uh, I had to drive in two hour traffic the other day, just coming home and because I had to go get uh, my, I got a heart thing and then I did a stress oh, test. Yeah. And I'm great, by the way. Um, the most pain wasn't from the stress test. It was from the sitting in my car. <laughs> yeah. I have a nice car, but. Doesn't matter. If back. your spine is upright, yep. there's going to be trouble. Yeah, it was no good. <laughs> I'm familiar. Uh, now it's apparent. Uh huh. Now it's a fact. Oh. So marshal your forces for another attack. What's apparent? Now, yeah, I don't completely track this, but. Feels now, like the secret is out. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So That's marshal perfect. your forces for another attack. That could be for you being a jerk, but more likely I read it as, so marshal your forces for defense. Yeah. Here it comes. Yes. Here comes the reckoning. Yeah. The secret is out and everybody's mad at you. Yeah. So I can get ready. And we've all been in that situation where you realize, 
Ooh, if I'd have told them at the time, they'd be less mad. Yes. This has been a year that I've known this thing. Yep. Yeah, it's my kid or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. Yeah, actually, that tracks really nicely. That is probably like the most frequent <laughs> error of my lifetime is just being like, I just won't say anything and maybe it'll go away. And yeah. then like a year later, like, well, I guess I got to say it. <laughs> and then ex the first question is always like, how long have you been thinking that? <laughs> when did this happen? A year ago. Yeah. You wasted a year of my life? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, now I, I want to draw just our attention back to the thing we noticed at the beginning. And I want to reference something you said before about a different Billy Joel thing. Uh, when we talked, I'll reference the episode where we talked about running on ice. Uh huh. Um, he does a really great job when he's focused on a song that's a little that's a little bit or a lot influenced by another artist because these lyrics are tremendously focused. They're tight. They are, yeah. It's a very good writing exercise that uh, he probably could use a little more of. <laughs> sure. It's um, good to know there's more than one when you think it, where you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He got he got really deep into just, and you know, Billy Joel is not alone in his fandom for the Beatles. There's quite a lot of other folks who like him too, so. Yes, it's true, and uh, a lot of imitators. And so this is- Varying degrees of accuracy. <laughs> yeah. So this is a good, uh, that I would say legitimate creative risk whenever you do something like this because the potential fallout from dicks is pretty large. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're, you know, if you're you know, like your Oasis who are a perfectly fine little band, but the second thing you say is we're better than the Beatles. You're like, okay, well, you're never going to be happy in your life. Good luck. Yep. And they never were, by the way. They never were. <laughs> You could have just fucking puttered along being a perfectly fine band. Yeah. And do the other jerk things. Oh, did you hear they got in a bar fight? Great. People love bar fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nobody's going to go. Not as much oh, as yeah. they love the Beatles. And nobody's going to go, oh, yeah. Remember when Paul McCartney got into a fist fight in a dumb bar? No one's going to say that. <laughs> yeah, you guys sure are the Beatles. Oh, you, you punched your brother? You broke his collarbone? Just like Paul McCartney, you idiot. <laughs> uh, Keep your mouth shut and you just do your little songs. Do uh, your little songs, Oasis. And this is uh, another episode of Why Jim's Mad at Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Marshall, 37 episodes. <laughs> so marshal your forces for another attack. It's a good lyric. Yep. Mm-mm-mm. Now, you were so young and naive. I know it's hard to believe, but now it shouldn't surprise you at all. You know. No, it shouldn't surprise you at all. You know. I like the repetition of you know. Yeah. Now we're deep into the conversation and whoever he's talking to isn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, another common theme. Mm -hmm. Or very likely knowing him, they are listening, but he doesn't believe that they're listening. <laughs> oh, that guy. Yep. Um, and I especially feel like I know quite a few of those guys. Um, I work with a lot of guys who are like from Long Island and they go, let me tell you something. The Mets are better than ever this year. And you go, yeah, they are pretty good. And he goes, no, no, no. I'm telling you, they're better than ever. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I think this might be the best they've ever been. Hey, listen, better than ever. And you're like, I said, oh, you don't care if I'm listening. You just want to lean in. Yeah. Okay. You want to show me how smart you are because you noticed that the Mets are good. Yeah. And that, and somehow that transfers onto you. And is this before or after they give you a handshake that takes too long? Long the take too yeah. long and also like the, the mechanics of it are wrong 
I'm, I'm, I'm so much taller than a lot of people that like, no, but you know, I'm like, Hey, there's certain things that are not great for me because I'm tall. And one of them is you're really vigorous coming up from below handshakes. Yeah. Where, uh, where you're like, we're not about to wrestle just so you know. So you can- yeah. Also, we both work here. You just saw me. <laughs> so I, we're not meeting at the airport. Right. <laughs> I didn't just come back from Nam. <laughs> um, now, so reading it, just reading it all by itself, you were so young and naive. I know it's hard to believe, but now it shouldn't surprise you at all. If you just do a, just read it as it is, it feels like part of it doesn't make entire sense because you say you were so young and naive. I know it's hard to believe, but now it shouldn't surprise you at all. However, if you read, I know it's hard to believe as, and this is, I think how it's meant to be seen as that emphasis where you go. Like if I were to say to you, um, you were a little too drunk that night. I know it's hard to believe. I know because and you're kind of hoping that by I'm making fun of you a little bit so that hopefully you go, you're right, I need to tone it down or whatever the thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, entirely. Yeah, I can hear that. I, I, what was interesting to me in that verse is uh, all of a sudden, you know, we were in it together for a while here. Yeah. Nobody noticed, nothing was heard, it was handled discreetly. I had no regrets. There were so many mistakes. And now it's suddenly it's you who were so young and naive. Yeah. Me, not so much. Which which could easily mean, yeah, that's a good observation because it could easily mean that had you just listened to me, people still wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah, you blew it. Yeah, you're the one who was so actually, you know, the other thing is our singer could could not know it, but be the villain because you had to go and tell them what happened. Ah, uh, yeah, that thing where like what I did was terrible, but that's not the point. You telling people, that's what ruined everything. That's where things went wrong. <laughs> you reporting my behavior. Yeah. Not my behavior is not the point. You and were... Uh, you noticing it and saying it to people. <laughs> That's the true sin. <laughs> yeah. that, that interpretation uh, transitions really nice into the next uh, lyric. What does it cost you? What have you won? Uh, what, do you, what did you get out of your confession, maybe? The sins of the fathers are the sins of the sons. Uh, What's the origin of that? Is that biblical? Yes. In fact, it is a breaking point between uh, Judaism and Christianity. I'll go over it very quickly. So in Christianity, you believe in something called vicarious atonement for sin, meaning that Uh Jesus can take upon him your sins, my sins, everybody. And that's how you uh, bridge that gap between you and God. And that is a fundamental... uh, part of christianity however in judaism and if you go back to the torah which would be the first five books of the bible not the books of the prophets there is a verse it's in genesis uh the sins of the father shall not be visited upon the son neither shall the sins of the son be visited upon the father rather each man will is responsible for the now paraphrasing a little bit but the gist of it is that your sins are yours and you have a kid it ain't your kid's fault so and likewise, if that kid does something, that ain't your fault. As far <laughs> as responsibility for sin. Um, and in Christianity, it's just, we have original sin. In Judaism, we go, why does it make any sense? How am I to blame for Adam screwing up in that garden? You can't be my son. That's how we put butts in the seats. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, but, and then in, when you take that out of the Bible and you apply it poetically here, I just think the sins of the fathers are the sins of the sons. But I think maybe we are talking about an affair and we could very well be talking about uh, a, 
pregnancy that was unaccounted for because uh. that is the sin of a father that's visited upon a son. <laughs> um, or a divorce, a divorce, it could be that too, because you ran your trap and now I'm getting divorced and and look at all right. the people who got hurt. Or, or, you know, it can also be the uh, psychological tenant of, you know, uh, children of abusers tend to become abusers themselves. Absolutely, yeah. The sins of the, you know, uh, if your dad was like a womanizer, there's a tendency that you will be a womanizer, yeah. um, which I always have thought is a dumb word. Because what does it mean to womanize? <laughs> it doesn't track. <laughs> I'm going womanizing. Although it is a banging track by Britney Spears, womanizer. Look it up. It's great. All right. Good song. All right. Well, we'll end the discussion there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, has, what has it cost you? What have you won? Is uh, it's not the same question. It's uh, it's about like trying to decide if this was worth it. Yeah. It's not it's not like a rebuke. It's like well, let's let's tally it up. Yeah. <laughs> what does this cost you? But also then, what did you get? Yeah. It could, but it could be a rebuke. Rebuke because it could be. Look at what it cost you, and what did you get? You got nothing. I know you. So what, yeah. you, you get this feeling of satisfaction that you walked in there and you went, all right, I fucked them, or whatever, <laughs> at the dinner party you went to. <laughs> and you flip the table. Which is impressive. You're, you're, a, you're not a big girl. You're, there was a wooden table, and I'll grant you, that was impressive. But, <laughs> but still, what have you won? Yeah. I hadn't even finished my dinner, so I, I should have waited until I ate. Can you flip it after dessert. <laughs> oh. There's a manners book about when to flip a table, right? <laughs> it's manners, <Yeah>. says. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I do like that lyric. I like. I will say I don't have any qualms about any of it, really. It just there. It's a very tight little story. It's a very tight little story that, and you know, clearly very open to interpretation. Right. Um, which is great because clearly that's the goal with this writing. Yeah. And I, it's, you know, it's good writing if it's intentionally open to interpretation. It's when uh, someone's trying to tell you an accurate story. <laughs> And then it's still open to interpretation. There's, well, then they fucked up. They're not telling the story correctly. But this one, he's just telling you a lot about kind of how it feels, this thing that happened, or this condition that exists. Just telling you how it feels, what the kinds of things it makes me say the kind, to you, the kinds of things you ought to start doing but um, you could like overlay it on a hundred different behaviors. Yeah. And it still works quite nicely. It really, really does. Um, I 100% agree. I like, I like a straight ahead story, you know, Ode to Billy Joe or whatever, where you kind of know what's going on. I like those yeah. kinds of stories and whatever. Right. But, but I 100% just do the thing you intended to do and I can probably get on board. Absolutely. Yeah. And it very uh, much does. And you got one more lyric, and then we're uh, wrapping this song up. Do it. It was always within you. It will always continue. But it shouldn't surprise you at all. You know, I said it shouldn't surprise you at all. You know. Um, it feels like a continuation of uh, the sins of the fathers or the sins of the son. Yeah. It was always within you. It will always continue. Yeah. You, yeah. This is uh, not a thing, a thing you did. It's not a mistake you made. This is who you are. Oh, God. Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. That's kind of what I was going to say, but you said it way better than I was. That's nice. This nice and concise. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you want to pass this off as like a mistake you made. But the fact is, you're a dick. And this is the latest manifestation of you being a dick. 
Yeah. And there's going to be more. Yep. The shape may be a little bit different, but just so you know, this came from within you. This wasn't an ex this, and you can't blame, you can blame people if you want to, but this wasn't external factors. No. And you can write yeah, it off that way. You can go, well, you know, this person did this thing and they were serving these kinds of drinks and it was an open bar. What are they supposed to do? <laughs> well, any number yeah. of excuses you can make or this was me. And I like that it's called, I feel like the title is very sarcastic to call it surprises. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, knowing what we think we know, <laughs> at least, yeah, uh, there were no surprises here. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like, so, you know, sometimes you write a thing and the title comes first. It's yeah. a great title. And the narrative follows from that. Because you, or you usually concurrently, you have an idea for a story. You know, the perfect title is this. This was probably lyrics and then surprises. That's yeah. probably what happened. And that's pretty yeah. and awesome. Probably wrote all the lyrics and then like combed through them. <laughs> like, what can I pull out of here that would be a title? And it really, I mean, it does have the refrain. I, it shouldn't surprise you at all, but the song is called Surprises. Yeah. Instead of No Surprises. Yeah. It's good that it's not called You Know. <laughs> they call it I that. would bet he had that written down for like a week. <laughs> like, I'll just call it You Know. And then, like, one of his manager was at his house one day and was like, What's this? Oh, it's my new song. It's called You Know. Can you show me the lyrics? <laughs> you know what you should do. <laughs> I just like Billy Joel, the character of Billy Joel in my head being hapless to some degree <laughs> in his own career. So I'd like to give him these little stories where somebody uh, comes by and fixes a little fuck up he made. <laughs> they surround him with a cast of friendly characters. <laughs> Just better than he did for himself. Yeah, true. So you know what you would have enjoyed? Speaking of the Beatles, you would have enjoyed, and now that I'm thinking about it, we should pitch it to somebody. Oh, no, for reals, this might be the best idea. So you, saw, I'm sure you saw um, Yellow Submarine, the movie. Sure. And of course, it's cartoon Beatles voice. We need to make pitch a Beatle, a Billy Joel cartoon. <laughs> with Billy Joel going on Long Island style magical adventures that take place in pizza places. He rides a motorcycle. Oh, yeah. The motorcycle can sometimes go through time. <laughs> so it's a little bit magic school bus. Yes. And a little bit. <laughs> now I'm no longer joking. This is a great idea for a show. <laughs> We, this is an adult swim show. This is a great show <laughs> on a motorcycle. Did oh. you ever see um, Nick Kroll on Kroll Show doing a piece called The Adventures of Young Billy Joel? No. Oh, it's pretty great because he does look enough like him that uh, with the right wig, it's a little freaky. <laughs> um, but it's him just like as like a mopey teen like befriending guys who work at the fucking docks. It's, it's, I will say it's not that funny. <laughs> it's, but it's just like stylistically, it's really interesting. It just well, reminds me of that. You should check it out. I will. And you know what's funny too? Then that means that he's another guy who's like, man, I really love Billy Joel. And isn't it funny that I love Billy Joel? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make this little sketch where I kind of act like I don't like him, but I, at the same time, I know an awful lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's great. That is great. Yeah, it's really great. It's really great. Uh, so anyway, I'm just real quick to show you my stock photo. Yeah. I see a uh, familiar sight. <laughs> Some pills and cocaine. Yep. Reds, some reds and coke. Yep. And a razor blade. Got a razor blade there. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
Now, Cocaine makes a few appearances Indeed. in a few different songs, but there's I don't see a spoon. No. I do think it is funny that all of these, my first thought is Big Shot. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what your background is <laughs> that keeps happening that'd be great if i just from now on like, yeah it's big shots now uh you could soothe your soul with fine cocaine <laughs> as we recently learned i could indeed i could indeed i'm not but i could no uh, mm. that was a good guess mm. huh that was a good guess that was a good guess yeah, I'm trying to find other appearances of cocaine. Well, um, I I might keep this stuff that I have um, in the uh, in the place we share together and live and home. Oh. We own it. <laughs> um, our home. Yep. Ah, <laughs> oh. oh, boy, I'm getting blank again. Um, Why did I have an Aperol spritz? Yeah, I'll, you you can't look it up, but I'll just give you the easiest of hints. It's on the same album we're talking about. Oh, 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 oh. Um, could we just, we might be in a room of our own? Yeah. Yep. I can't place the lyric. It is. Let me look up the lyric and read it correctly. But it is a place of our own, and uh, a room of our own, actually. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, and the lyric is: "You've got diamonds, and I've got spades. You've got pills, and I've got razor blades." That's right. Yep. The uh, I guess the cocaine actually being present is a <laughs> bit of a. Uh, it can be confusing about the lyric. Although I always feel like with the razor blade, the cocaine's implied. I, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much as. Um, that that's song pretty... jams. Huh? That song jams, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, the song we should pick sometimes. It's not the one I picked, so it's still right. it's still on the board. It's still still on the board. But before I tell you my song, um, I'm looking for some trivia. Well, I also was looking for some trivia <laughs> for a long time and I could not find anything that we haven't covered. Um, we did talk about uh, divorces and such. Yeah. Do you know um, total wife number? How many wives? Okay. And I'm both points say... if you can name them. All right. I'll take first names. So first, I'm going to say four. Correct. That's what I thought. OK. Uh, Christy Brinkley, I'm just going to say, is third? Second, second. I think. She's second. OK. Second. And then, no, I got no shot at naming those lovely ladies. Yeah, there was Elizabeth was the first. Christy Brinkley, then there was Katie Lee. And I believe the current is Alexis. Wow. Okay. Who is, uh, I think she'll write it out to the end. Because. Who knows, man? Yeah. I thought Katie Lee was going to write it out to the end. Yeah. Because <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. It is his first. It's, you know, divorces are sad uh, or they're great. Because I know people have gotten divorced and it was the best thing that ever happened to them. And that's great. Um, yeah. His mm -hmm. first is such a, if you were making a biopic about Billy Joel, it, it's such a cliche for the celebrity and particularly the rock and roller that it's, it's so funny. It's a by the numbers that this is what happens a lot of times when a guy hits it real big at that age. And he's, because she was more or less as close to his childhood sweetheart, right? They, yeah. Oh, they yeah. Foundation where I don't think any of the others had a foundation. You know, the others were just okay. like, okay, I think this could work, but they had built this whole thing. And then just rock and roll will do that. And, you know, that kind of, particularly for a guy like who probably wasn't 
that great with the ladies pre-fame? You know, I'm, I'm Googling and I'm seeing that um, Elizabeth, his very first wife, was uh, married to his music partner. Oh, Lord. In, in the super early days and they had an affair. Oh. And so oh. he like stole her from his music partner. Well, then I am wrong. That's a little different. That's good. Yeah. I mean, not good, but it's different. It's a good story. It's, it's a good story. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so he was never pursuing a real stable. <laughs> he was never on the, in the cards to just go, okay, well, let's work on what we have in common. <laughs> yeah, no. Let's work, no, you know. I feel like uh, we got an impetuous fellow. Yeah. On our hands. Yeah, it is, uh, you know, it is the thing about why he's successful and why certain things don't work. It's like, why do, it's always like, well, how could that athlete have gone broke? And you're like, well, <laughs> part of it is going to be the things they didn't learn about finance, which is again, why LeBron yeah. James and Kobe Bryant, amazing people, because they actually set up classes for their friends. They're like, hey, yeah. come learn about it. But the other part is the thing that made them a great basketball player makes them horrible with money. Their competitive yeah. nature. Yes. And the thing that makes you a Billy Joel, makes you a rock and roll star, you know, you know, you're whatever your version of it, you know, you're Freddie Mercury, you're Billy Joel, you are different guys, but underneath sort of same insecurity driving you. Yeah. To be that. And driving and also driving you away from things conventional. Yeah. Absolutely. If you want to be a musician or an artist, then you, it's usually because you have pre-rejected uh, normal life. No, uh -huh. absolutely. And yeah. Like, oh. oh, you're married, huh? I don't care, because that's a convention. Yeah. And it also means that when you do something conventional, like you get married, it's harder for you to go, this is so important. Yes, and I'm very satisfied with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because this was my goal. Yeah. Now, that's why it's always a story when you hear about some musician or actor and you're like, who'd they marry? This person? Who are they married to now? Oh, that same person, huh? huh. Yeah. Huh. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. I think they're doing it wrong. It's not what you're supposed to do. Yeah. They probably have an arrangement. Yeah. You, you start trying to help them cheat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Tom Hanks? Don't worry about Tom Hanks. He gets plenty on the road. <laughs> Paul Goebel, our friend Paul Goebel, if you talk about celebrity marriages, he's convinced every one of them is arranged. Great. Every single one of them. And he goes, well, you know, they had to get married because he's on this TV show and she's doing this thing and he wanted to do movies. So he knew if he married her, he could do, well, maybe, but is it oh, boy. A, couple of them, a couple of them are married, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's probably right about, you know, Tom Cruise. Yeah. A handful of other dudes. Oh, yeah. Tom Cruise for sure is not because that guy is a ladies man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I say that because that's how I don't get, we don't get sued on our show. Yeah. That's, that's one way. <laughs> or implying a perfectly banal thing that he should have made peace with. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't imply it. No, nope. I don't need Scientologists in my house. Yeah, nobody does. Yeah, unless they brought snacks. I oh. like snacks. I do love snacks. I wonder what their policy is on snacks and stuff. Oh. Probably cool. Yeah, I think yeah, they probably are good. It falls under enlightened self-interest, right? Yeah, isn't that <laughs> sort of the watchword? Yeah. Anyway, um, we're talking about Scientology. About Scientology. I haven't even done the e-meter on you, but I can tell by those pigs in a blanket. You were a thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to rise right up those levels. <laughs> uh, the song that I chose, I was wrangling with this because I was like, well, I don't think it's time for another An Innocent Man. Not yet. Although we are eventually going to cover that entire album. We'll probably eventually cover every album. But um, I picked this song. Uh, 
I have mixed feelings about it. It's a good song. I think it's a good song. It's The Entertainer. Uh, a special place in my heart. Yeah, good. Yeah. Why? Um, because I, when I went to college, I didn't own any music because of my weird family. <laughs> when, but I had heard some Billy Joel and I liked it. And so I went across the street from the university to Al Bums, used records where I could not find any Billy Joel, but I did find an album by a band called Mirror Image that was all Billy Joel covers that sounded really close. <laughs> and uh, The Entertainer was on that album and I'd never heard it before. It was okay. one of the, the few, the rest was like hits that you had heard by then. Um, and then, uh, yeah, my friend Sam and I, Sam Truitt, just played the grooves off that song because it was so peppy. Yeah, it's a fun little song, that's for sure. Fun little song, and it's a nice little genre. Here's what it's like being on the road with your band and worrying all the time. Yep. Um, and knowing what we know about Billy Joel, I feel like his complaining about people mucking around with the lyrics and the runtime. <laughs> yeah. He I'm sure. Like he don't like that and he shouldn't, you know? Yeah. No artist should. I'd, you know, some get madder than others, but you, you wrote a damn song and let, leave me alone and let me write my song. And you you can't write a song, A&R guy. And you know, the album cut is something like 338. But if you <laughs> buy the 45, it's uh, they cut it down to 305. Yep. I did know that. Which I'm sure they must have done on purpose. Yeah, uh, there's no way they didn't. And also no. that song, I'll, I'll give that song credit Coop too, because that song just has a proper ending. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> it's pretty close to that. Yep, absolutely. Um, great. I will look forward to that. Yeah, that is a good little ditty. Uh, thanks, folks, for tuning in. And um, uh, look out within the next week or so if you're of a mind to I'll drop the proper podcast that's an actual podcast not just a vodcast mm -hmm. so two ways to enjoy this and Alex and I will be promoting it to whatever degree we feel like promoting it fantastic <laughs> oh you know what I almost did I'm so great <laughs>